key junction bar dividers. In the previous videos, we have studied the basic theory of bar dividers, bar combiners, and direction couplers. Now, starting from this lecture, we are going to apply what we have studied in the previous videos on practical uh, power dividers and direction couplers. One of the simplest type of uh, power dividers and power combiners uh, is the T-junction. Such T-junction can be implemented in waveguide configuration like this two configuration or in printed circuit configuration like this configuration. Uh, in this case, if we are talking about the power division or power divider, the input board will be coming from this board and it would be divided between these two boards. So assume this board 1 and this board 2 and board 3. So the power in board 1, sum of this bar is divided to board 2 and sum of this bar is divided to board 3 and sum would be reflected at port 1 itself if the bar divider is not matched. Uh, the difference between these two configurations is that uh, here uh, the bar division occurs along the E-plane or along the direction of the electric field. So assuming that the input port of this waveguide is excited by the dominant TE10 mode, so the electric field will be along the narrow side like this. Now, at the edge of the T of the power divider, this electric field will be divided in two parts, one in this direction and the other in the opposite direction. Assuming that the electric field line has been divided into two parts. So the polarity here, if it was positive, it would be positive here. And the polarity here, if it was negative, it would be negative here. Then, such a divided electric field will propagate across the horizontal waveguide sections one in this way and the other in this way. This T junction power divider is known as E plane wave by T because the division here occurs in the direction of the electric field. So it is E plane. Uh, such E plane waveguide divider, if this waveguide section has the same width, uh, will have equal amplitude and the output will be out of phase. So assuming here the phase is zero, the phase on the other port would be 180 degrees. This is the main property of E plane waveguide T. On the other hand, if the division occurs along uh, the wide side of the waveguide, and also assuming that uh, the excitation mode is a dominant TE10 mode, so the electric field in this direction, like this, and concentrate at the middle, then when it propagates along the exciting waveguide section, it would be divided in equal way and with the same polarity in both sides. So, assuming that uh, the two sides of this T has the same width and the same height, so the power division would be equal, and in this case, the output power from board 2 would equal the output power from board 3, and it would be at the same phase shift. This is known as H plane waveguide T, because the division here occurs in the direction of the magnetic field H. That's why we are calling it H plane waveguide T. Another configuration for T junction in printed line structure, assuming that 
this is microstubuli. Uh, the microstubuli, the feeding microstubuli, is divided into two branches. So if this port one, this would be port two and port three. In this case, the polarity of uh, the incident or the excitation would be the same as the polarity of the two outputs because both of them would be from the ground plane to uh, the printed line. Now, it is required to study how to design such uh, lossless T junction power divider. Uh, in this case, we assume the feeding excitation line, assuming that the microscope line or a waveguide has a characteristic impedance Z0, and the two sides of the T junction in general has characteristic impedances Z1 and Z2, assuming that they are not equal. Actually, at the junction itself, there will be evanescent waves or stored energy. These evanescent waves or stored energy uh, can be uh, represented as a shunt uh, susceptance at the junction of this T bar divide. Assuming that uh, this acceptance is negligible, so we can approximate the problem such that we have a transmission line Z0 connected in parallel to two transmission lines of characteristic median Z1 and Z2. In this case, the input impedance at the junction or the input admittance at the junction, Y input, would be Y1 plus Y2. So, in general, the input admittance, Y input, would equal JB, where B is the susceptance due to uh, the discontinuity at the T junction, plus the characteristic admittance of uh, the transmission line 1, plus the characteristic admittance of the transmission line 2. Uh, in case of this T junction to be matched at the input port, so the input admittance, Y input, should equal the input admittance or the admittance or, or the characteristic admittance of the feeding transmission line. The characteristic admittance of the feeding transmission line is 1 over Z0. So we say that in order for the divider to be matched, to the input of the line of the characteristic impedance Z0 and assuming that uh, the susceptance due to the discontinuity is nearly zero the, con the required condition is that 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 should equal 1 over Z0 so at the beginning we should design Z1 and Z2 to satisfy this condition such that this T junction would be matched at the input port. On the other hand, the output uh, line impedances Z1 and Z2 can be selected to provide various power divisions ratio. Actually, if Z1 equals Z2, the power division would be equal for board 1 and board 2. However, by adjusting the ratio between Z1 and Z2, we can adjust the ratio of B1 to B2. Uh, for example, if we have a 50 ohm input line and we want to design a 3 dB equal power divider, 3 dB it means half power, uh, 3 dB equal uh, power divider. Uh, we can use Z1 and Z2 to be 100 ohms. In this case, 1 over 100 plus 1 over 100 it would be 2 over 100, which is 1 over 50. And because Z1 
equal z2 equal 100 the power at port 1 equal the power at port 2 and because it is matched all the power going from port 1 will be reaching port 2 and port 3 and because they are equal the power from port 1 will be divided equally between port 2 and port 3 in this case the output port at port 1 or port 3 would be 3 minus 3 dB of the input power okay on the other hand if the output lines are matched if the output lines are matched then the input line will be matched if the output lines are matched then the input line will be matched meaning that once again assuming that we have a 50 ohm line feeding two lines each one is 100 ohm and this line is connected to z load equal 100 and this line is connected to z load equal 100 ohm this means that the output lines are matched in this case the input impedance seen from uh, the feeding point it would be z1 from the line 1 and z2 from line 2 and they are in parallel at the junction so the total input impedance would be 1 over z1 plus 1 over z2 that's what we are seeing if the output lines are matched if the output lines here are matched then the input line will be matched and there will be no isolation between the output ports uh, uh, this is another point sorry uh, there will be no isolation between the output ports however there will be mismatch looking into the output ports what does it mean this means that what will be the situation if we reverse the problem uh, instead of feeding from board one we are going to feed from board two for example and let board uh, one is connected to a load z node and board two or connected to uh, a load z one in this case the power going from z two will be divided between port 2 and port 1 this means that the power going from port 1 can reach sorry the power, the, uh, the power going from port 3 can reach to port 2 means that there is no isolation between port 2 and port 3 actually this is a serious problem in uh, some applications like uh, antenna feeding network where in we have an array for example and this in element one and this element two and we want the received signal from element two reach to uh, the receiver and does not affect on uh, the element number one for example so in practical cases it is required to introduce isolation between the output ports However, T junction power divider does not offer uh, this uh, output port isolation. So there will be no isolation between the output ports. However, there will be some mismatch looking into the output ports. Uh, this mismatch is meaning that I have designed the T network such that it is matched from port 1 but it doesn't mean that it is matched from board one if i'm feeding from board two it would be matched from board two no it will be mismatched or in other words the input impedance seen from board two is not z2 or in other words the parallel combination between z1 and z0 is not z2 okay so there will be mismatch from port 2 also there will be mismatch from board uh, 3 uh, this means that the T junction is lossless lossless because we don't have losses here reciprocal reciprocal because uh, S23 equal S32 S13 equal S31 S 
1, 2 equal S2, 1. So, this is solved. But this is not completely matched. This is matched from only one board. But it is not matched from board 2 and board 3. And as we mentioned before, uh, for any three board network, we cannot satisfy the three conditions simultaneously. Match it, uh, lossless, and reciprocal. So, in the case of T junction, uh, it is lossless, it is reciprocal, but it is not for match it. It is match it only in one board, which is called board one or the feeding board. Okay? Example on T junction bar divider. Uh, a lossless T junction bar divider has a source impedance of 50 ohm. This means that the first line or the feeding line has a characteristic impedance Z0 equals 50 ohm. Find out, uh, find the output characteristic impedance, find the output characteristic impedances so that the output bar are in a 2 to 1 ratio. This means that it is required to find out Z1 and Z2 such that the power at board 2 to the power at board 3 has a ratio 2 to 1. Then compute the reflection coefficient seen looking into the output boards. After designing Z1 and Z2, it is required to find out the reflection coefficient seen from board 2 and board 3. Okay? At the beginning, it should be matched at board 1. This means that the input impedance seen at the junction of the T junction should be Z0. And in this case, the input power, B input, it would be V0 squared over 2 over Z0, where V0 is a weak voltage, or in other words, the root mean square voltage squared, but the root mean square is V0 over square root 2 squared, it would be V0 squared over 2 over the characteristic impedance Z0. This is the input power. Now, this input power would be divided uh, between port 2 and port 3. The input voltage at the transmission line Z1 is V0. And also, the input voltage at the transmission line Z0 is also V0. So, the power passing through the transmission line Z1, it would be V1 equals 1 over 2 V0 squared over Z1. And the power passing through the transmission line Z2, it would be half V0 squared over Z2. And because the ratio, the required ratio is 2 over 2, 2 over 1, this means that we are going to divide the input power into three parts. Two of three will pass through the transmission line Z2, and one over three will pass through Z1. So, in this case, B2 over B1 would be 2 over 1. Alright? Okay, now we say that V1 equals 1 third Vn, and Vn actually equals 1 over 2 V0 squared over Z0. This means that 1 over 2 V0 squared over Z1 equals 1 over 3 multiplied by 1 over 2 V0 squared over Z0. Or, in other words, we can see that Z1 equals 3 times Z2, Z0. And Z0 was originally 50 ohms, 
This means that the characteristic impedance of the transmission line Z1 would be 150 ohms. In a similar steps, V2 equals 2 over 3 V input, and V input is 1 over 2 V naught squared over Z naught. Now, by applying V input in this equation and eliminating V naught squared over V naught squared with V naught squared, the remaining parts it would be Z2 Z2 would equal 3 over 2 Z naught and because Z naught is 50 ohms so Z2 would be 75 ohms now we have designed the, the required characteristic impedance Z1 and Z2 such that the output power B2 to the output power B1 will have a ratio 2 to 1 ok alright uh, the question now is what will be the reflection coefficient seen by port 2 in this case we have a characteristic impedance Z1 and the input impedance in this case would be uh, the input impedance here parallel with the input impedance here the, barrel in the, barrel, uh, the input impedance here is Z0 and uh, the input impedance here is Z2 which is 75 ohm so we can 50 ohm barrel to 75 ohm 50 ohm barrel to 75 ohm it would be 30 ohms so the input impedance seen by Z1 is 30 ohms so the reflection coefficient from or 2 or from the line 1 gamma 1 would be 30 ohms minus the characteristic impedance 150 ohms over 30 ohms plus 150 Z load minus Z node Z load here is the 50 ohms better with the 75 ohms Z naught is 150 ohms so the reflection coefficient seen from port 1 is minus 0.666 on the other hand the reflection coefficient seen by the transmission line Z2 in this case the input impedance seen at the junction would be Z1 better to Z naught Z1 equals 150 ohms barrel to Z node 50 ohm so 50 ohm barrel to 150 ohm is 37.5 ohms the 37.5 ohm will be connected to transmission line with characteristic impedance 75 ohm so the reflection coefficient would be 37.5 minus 75 over 37.5 plus 75 would be minus 0.333 finally if we are looking from board 1 we can note that the input impedance seen would be uh, 150 ohm which is Z1 barrel to 50 ohm which is Z2 uh, 50, 75 ohm so 75 barrel to 150 ohm is 50 ohm and the characteristic impedance is original 50 ohm so the input impedance equals the characteristic impedance of the feeding line this means that S11 would be uh, zero or there is no reflection at the feeding uh, board one uh, this is an example for uh, lossless reciprocal uh, bar divider based on T junction transmission line. Another type of T junction bar divider is the Lucy bar divider. In the case of the Lucy bar divider, we are going to add 
resistive loads on the transmission line sections. These resistive loads will correspond to dissipated power in the feeding and output uh, transmission line sections. So, in this case, the power divider would be lossy. So, we can design such power divider to be matched at all ports and at the same time it would be reciprocal because actually we have lost uh, the property of lossless. Uh, to design such lossy divider, if a three board divider contains lossy component, it can be made to be matched at four boards. Although the two boards may not be isolated, however, the two output boards are not isolated too. Uh, in this case, uh, assuming that the resistive load connected to each transmission line is Z0 over 3, and the characteristic impedance of the three transmission line sections is Z0. So, in this case, the input impedance seen from uh, board 2 would be Z0 in series with Z0 over 3. And in a similar way, the input impedance seen from board 3 would be Z0 in series with Z0 over 3. So, we have two impedances, each one is Z0 over 3 plus Z0, which is 4 Z0 over 3, 4 Z0 over 3, which are in parallel to each other. So, the total input impedance seen at the junction would be half this quantity. So, the total input impedance would be 2 over 3 Z0. 2 over 3 Z0. And this 2 over 3 Z0 is connected in series with Z0 over 3. So, the input impedance after the resistive load seen by the transmission line it would be Z0 over 3 plus 2Z0 over 3 would be Z0 which means that the input impedance equals the characteristic impedance of the feeding line or in other words the reflection coefficient at board 1 would be Z. From the symmetry of the problem we can prove that this condition would be valid for board 2 and for board 3 too. So in this case the reflection coefficient from board 1 and from board 2 and from board 3 is 0. This means that in terms of uh, the scattering parameters S11 equals S22 equals S33 equals 0. Uh, on the other hand if you are looking at uh, the power B2 and B3 in terms of the input power B1 uh, we see that uh, the input voltage uh, at the end of the feeding transmission line is V1. Actually, this V1 is not the voltage at the junction. Because, as I said, the input impedance seen at the junction here is 2Z0 over 3. And V1 connected to this junction through another impedance Z0 over 3. So, this is simply a power divider. So, we can say that the input voltage at the junction V equals V1 multiplied by 2Z0 over 3 over the total impedance Z0 over 3 plus 2Z0 over 3, which is Z0. So, this means that the input voltage at the junction V is 2 over 3 V1. So, not all the incident voltage will pass to the junction. Actually, one third of the voltage will be dropped on the, on the dissipative uh, resistor. Uh, this voltage is actually 
the excitation voltage for the transmission line 2 and transmission line 3 and in this case we look at the voltage here uh, this voltage will be divided between Z0 over 3 and the characteristic impedance Z0 assuming that Z0 is connected here Z0 this means that the voltage V2 which appears at the starting point of the transmission line 2 after uh, the dissipative resistance at the junction V2 would equal V multiplied by Z0 over Z0 plus Z0 over 3 V2 equal V multiplied by Z0 over Z0 plus Z0 over 3 similarly we can prove that V3 equals V multiplied by Z0 over Z0 plus Z0 over 3 this means that V2 equals V3 equals 3 over 4 V and already we have proved that V equals 2 over 3 V1 this means that V2 equals V3 equals half V1 or in other words we can say that V2 over V1 equals 1 half which is S21 and V3 over V1 equals 1 half which is S31 so S11 is 0 and S21 is 1 half and S31 is 1 half in a similar way we can prove that or in other words because uh, the problem is uh, reciprocal the scattering matrix is symmetric so S21 equals S12 and S31 equals S13 and also between the board 2 and board 3 S23 equals S32 equals 1 over 2 so the resulting scattering matrix in this case is of multiplied by 1, uh, 0, 1, 1 one zero one 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 zero okay uh, in this case the input power the input power from board one would be one over two v one squared over z naught and the output power at board two would be one over two v two squared over z naught v two is 1 half or 1 over 2 V1 so V2 is 1 over 2 V2 which is 1 over 2 V1 squared over Z0 by squaring this we can find it is 1 over 8 V1 squared over Z0 in a similar way we can prove that the power from board 3 is 1 over 2 V3 squared over Z0 and V3 is 1 over 2 V1 so it will be 1 over 8 V1 squared over Z0 this means that the power B2 equals power B3 equals 1 over 4 V input because the V input is 1 over 2 V1 squared Z0 this means the total output power B2 plus B3 is half the input power or in other words half the power is dissipated in uh, the three resistors and the other half is divided between the two output ports that's why this power divider is lossy so it is reciprocal it is matched at all ports but it is lossy uh, divided also uh, ports one, 2 and 3 are not isolated there is transmission from port 2 to port 3 this is the case of T junction power dividers. We have two cases, lossless and lossy power divider. Uh, by this end, we can, we completed the T junction. In the following video, we are going to study another type of power divider, which is known as Wilkinson power divider.